Those tower defense is easily one of the best tower defense games franchises out there. Easy to pick up and play. You can put up a decent challenge at times. It's the franchise that put Ninja Kiwi on the map. But there's also another Ninja Kiwi franchise that people sleep on. That franchise is SAS Zombie Assault, baby. Here we have the first game, Stas 1. And these visuals are pretty primitive and this looks similar to another zombie shooting game. That is COD Zombies. It looks like COD Zombies on an isometric angle. Pretty ironic since both games came out the same year. But then again, COD Zombie was inspired by a Flash game so technically ripped off that game. And the devs did say that Zombie SES Zombie Assault was a homage to COD Zombies. What I really hate about this game is that the camera does not move automatically. You have to constantly change the angle as you go, which is really annoying. Now, reloading in this game is weird. You don't have reserve ammo like any other normal shooter. Basically, every time you reload it, it uses up your money, which is strange. Imagine if a new shooter comes out, but every time you want to reload, you have to pay a fee. There are multiple zombie types. There's a regular zombie, the fast zombie, this red fat zombie thing that's called a bloater, apparently. As for the weapons, we have the Glock, which is really bad, the MP5, which is really bad, the shotgun, which is okay. It has this really beefy shotgun noise, I really like it. The LED 5A2, which is a burst gun that's really solid. The AWM, which is a sniper rifle with high damage, but the slow fire rate cripples this thing. Don't use it. And last, the mag machine gun. This thing is broken. It makes every other gun obsolete. This thing just shreds to everything. You have to try to die when you use this thing. It also comes with upgrades like uh, upgraded barriers. You can also get some sentries and some landmines. So the sentries are bad and they have the most annoying sound ever. Now the biggest issue with this game that it's way too easy, even on the hardest difficulty. Even without that godlike mag gun, you can still last for a long time. This game is okay, but I don't think it's worth revisiting, considering it gets better from here. And got better indeed, because SAS 2 kicks ass. Now you thought SAS 1 had some COD Zombie similarities? They literally took door buying from COD Zombies, like it's the exact same thing. Also don't open this door here. Seriously, don't open it. Just, just, just trust me, okay? Just trust me. Now, this game isn't much different from the first in many ways. The good things are that there are new weapons and all the old weapons from the first game come back, except for the LA-52. Gar-L is the new burst replacement weapon. But out of all the guns to be burst, why the Gar-L? Wouldn't it make more sense to be, a, like, I don't know, an M16? Next, we have the G3, which is a semi-auto gun, which is a beast in this game. It's my go-to gun in this game. It can carry you to the highest of rounds with its fucking fast fire rate. Well, if you have a good trigger finger like me, but really good gun. I highly recommend it. New guns are the HK-417 and the AK, and those guns aren't good. The HK has high fire rate, but the damage is really bad. And it's the exact, like, reverse problems for the AK. It's low fire rate, but high damage. The M60 is at it, and while not being the Annihilator that was the mag in SAS 1, it's still a great gun, though it's really expensive. So I don't think you're gonna last very long when you get to it. There are also premium weapons, which I would love to talk about, but since Flash is dead, I, I can't really use them. This game also adds ranks, with each new rank giving you a new perk. Let's see, it's pretty normal perk selection. Badass this? <laughs> Why is it called that? And what does it do? Oh, you get more health. So the more badass you are, the tougher you get. Alright, game, that's pretty cheeky. All the zombie types from the first game are sorted with a bunch of new ones. This crawler thing called a choker, which is really tanky for some reason, and this weird red thing, I don't know what it is. Now, SAS 1 was a really easy game. 
but SAS 2, gosh, they really turned up the difficulty for this one because this game is really difficult. In a good way, okay? It's like I'm actually incentivized to survive for as long as I can this time. Unlike in SAS 1 where I could probably like read a book, do my homework, do my laundry, and I'll still be alive. Now SAS 2 also got a new map called the Insane Asylum. Wonder where they got that. And what I don't understand about it is that they made it like a separate game, which they did the same thing for Bloons Tower Defense 4, and it made no sense there because they're they all have the same thing. Well, I guess like SAS 2, like new map, new gun, and some new like enemy type, like an exploding clown. Okay, that's really fucking random. Exploding clown. There is new stuff here, but not enough for it to be standing alone. This map is pretty good fun though. Nowhere near as hard as the other map though. So overall, SAS 2, great game. Proves in the first game in every way. Highly recommended. Now we get into the most well known entry in the series, SAS 3. I'll be talking about the Flash version in another version I'll reveal later. Now this game ditches the endless survival from the first two and goes for a more limited wave-based survival split into five missions. Instead of buying weapons during the game, this game introduces loadouts where you can have six weapons at a time. You could probably go like full boomer shooter or something with like six different rocket launchers. Every now and then you'll see a crate appear which can contain a weapon or a grenade, but the weapons are so strong that they kill the zombies in one hit! And they last until like the game ends or you use up all your ammo. I think these crate drops break the game. The weapons are just way too strong for the amount of zombies that show up, which isn't many. Actually, this game is just back to like SAS 1's levels of easy. I guess they looked at SAS 2 and thought it was too hard and it wanted to make it much easier, but they just went too far here. This game is just way too forgiving. Even when you replay the levels, they're supposed to spawn like stronger zombies, but they barely spawn an enemy. I took so little damage playing this that I think I only got hit twice. And I wasn't really paying attention when I got hit those times. This game also introduced co-op, which I played back in the day. It was pretty fun, but you know, the servers are dead, so you can't really play it. I'm gonna be honest, I'm not really feeling it with this game. Like, the brain that difficulty just kills it for me. Now, a year later, they ported SAS 3 to FOUND. Now, when this game came out, I was a big skeptical because it was remade for phones, mobile games. Which is a red flag already. Oh my fucking god, it's a phone game. Really? Out uh, of all the platforms you could have picked, pick a fucking phone game. Think of it, that's what East Guy and Judgment did basically. Except those were fucking phone games. Let's go. Let's go. Wake up. Huh? Snap out of it, bro. You had me worried, man. What happened? You saw that a game was on a phone, then you guys went all over the place. Oh, is that why there are a bunch of running phones there? Yes. Dude, what the f Damn, really need to stop listening when I see a phone. Don't you think? Also, want to do a sip you the night randomizer? All right, get out of my fucking house. Okay, okay, I'm gonna be honest with you guys. I used to be a mobile game fanatic. I used to play a lot of Angry Birds games, Cartoon Wars, Soul Knight, and other great mobile games. This was back when mobile games were actually, you know, video games. And I just grew out of them. If I was a mobile gamer today, I'd, I'd probably hate video games. But SAS 3 on mobile is the definitive way to play the game. Fixes all my issues with the Flash version, adds way more missions to Flash, and adds new features. It adds an AI partner that you can equip weapons with so you don't feel like you're alone all the time. Weapons are now upgradable, extending their usefulness though they can make some guns crazy overpowered if you really dedicate the time. Armor has been added, making the higher waves more doable. More weapons have been added and the brain dead difficulty has been made much much harder. But why, why is this version stuck on mobile? Fuck, I, I hate playing shooters on mobile. I hate playing shooters on mobile. So this game has been treated like shit over the years. Like number one, the servers have been shut down. So that means you can't play online anymore. You're just relegated to single player now. Number two, the store is broken. Not necessarily the items you can buy with in-game cash you earn, but the stuff you buy with real money. You can go spend this money on this game right now and you won't get what you pay for. So not even the store works. The one thing you would expect to work doesn't work anymore. Oh, and the new game mode is mobile port introduced, tournament mode is also broken. So I can't talk about it. Despite all those glaring issues, I still recommend this game. Easily the best in the series. No other SAS game will come close. And here we have the spin-off of the series, SAS Zombie Assault Tower Defense. And this title screen is all over the place. Like, what am I looking at here? You have these zombies are in 4K and you have this guy who's like a 240p. But here we have the game and there's a few bloom similarities. Most blatant one is the upgrade system. 
but unlike in balloons where you can only get wall D upgrades on one side, in SAS tower defense you can get both sides fully upgraded. For the units we have the Bicker Storage, which is basically a sentry gun that can shred through zombies one by one really fast. Next is the MGL Torrid that shoots rockets, though not as good as the Victor Torrid since its fire rate is really slow. I'd say at least get two of them for them to be viable. Next is the Special Torrid which is not very good. I guess it's supposed to be like a support torrid, but the benefits aren't very good. You're better off just getting like some other unit. Then we have the SAS units which the MG SAS unit is a versatile unit even though they can die really fast. I recommend you put them behind turrets. And the sniper SAS is it's just a sniper buggy from loons, nothing special. There's also extra defenses like sandbags and barbed wires to slow down the zombies and frag grenades to pick off zombies to get past your defenses. We have special power ups which vary from elemental grenades to a chopper that can shred through hordes of zombies and a fucking nuke. You can get these power-ups from like random crate drops that appear every now and then. And this game is hard. You'd be chilling, not worrying at all, and then boom, defense is destroyed. You gotta rush to get another defense up. It's fucking intense. Well, the final wave is really easy since it's just one enemy that you can just fucking well on. So you probably have like the most overpowered shit at this point. Oh my god, if I saw that victory screen as a kid, I I would have shat my pants. So that's Sass Cell Musal Tower Offense. Overall, it's a great game. People really benefit from a sequel, but that's not going to happen. Now, Sass 4. I remember being really excited for this game. And when it came out, I played it for an hour, and I was like, that's it? That's all it has to offer? We waited two years for this? Safe to say, I was pretty disappointed. Now, a lot of things were changed and added. This game introduces classes. First, we have Assault, who focuses on high damage and high mobility. Second, we have the Tank, focusing on surviving for long periods of time. And last, we have the Medic, who focuses on keeping the team alive. This game also introduces the Skill Tree, which you have your normal SAS skills, and then it's class skills unique to each class. I think this class system is pretty cool on paper. The problem is that you can play each class the same way and you'll succeed. What I think they should have done is give each a specific weapons they can use because you can just be a medic with the biggest gun in the world and not have to worry about anything. Like, okay, for example, let's take the assault. These are like uh, high damage, high mobility, but you know, low health, right? But you know, armor just makes it obsolete. So let's just make him like, you know, die in like one or two hits or give him some like cooldown or something. Just something to maybe play differently. Instead of being able to buy the guns you want, this game introduces strong boxes, which are just loot boxes that have items. Yay! Isn't that what we all wanted from SAS Zombie Assault? I love gambling. With the equipment, you can have like skill augmentations that you can apply. I actually quite like this feature. It's a more balanced version of SAS 3 gun upgrading. So you can't pick every upgrade unlike in SAS 3. Though I hate it, the amount of you can upgrade is random with each armor. You get a piece with like 8 slots or an armor piece with like 2. This game also adds weapon masteries where if you use a specific weapon type a lot, you can get bonuses. I think that was pretty cool. You know what I really hate about this game? It's how slow you move. You move so slow. Speed up. Like... These are the slowest soldiers I've ever seen in an outbreak. Why are you moving this fucking slow? So if you play this game, dump all your points into fucking movement. I cannot play this game without that. Another issue with this game is the ammo system. You have two types, regular ammo and high damage ammo. There is literally no reason to not use high damage ammo. It makes regular ammo obsolete. I guess the trade off is more expensive, but you can get rich easily in this game. Just look at my money. My biggest issue with this game is none of those problems. It's the lack of content. So when 2014 me said that's all it has to offer, it's because there's only 7 missions in the game. That's barely more than SAS 3 on Flash. Oh, but they knew it wasn't enough, so they made each mission level locked to a specific level so you don't fucking blast through it. But you know, for this video, I made a new character and it took me like an hour and a half to get through all of it. Do you imagine if it had no level cap? I probably could get through it in like 20 minutes. So you already got underwhelming campaign. But 2014 me said it's okay, it's okay. They'll add more missions in the future, right? 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 All we have is these seven repetitive missions, which let me talk about them. All these missions are fucking shit. Well, there are two missions that I kind of like. First one being where you rescue these civilians, which can be killed funny enough, so you can mess up. And I like it when there's like these locked doors you can enter that could have civilians or they could have zombies. I think that was pretty cool. It adds like some risk factor. And this other mission where like you're in a subway and you go on the train and zombies can get inside of it. Kind of reminds me of transit. The less we talk about transit, the better. 
Most of them are just like, go over here, defend this spot for seven minutes, then go over here, and then leave. That's the entire fucking game structure. You know what else this game has? Boss fights, yeah. And they suck, honestly. Just look at this one fight. He didn't do anything to me. He had this zombie robot. How the fuck can a robot be a zombie? Wow, really engaging boss fight. Now for updates, we really didn't get much. Most of the time we just got events for like strong boxes. We did get nightmare mode. If you hate fun, you'll love that mode. But that was it for like six years. Six years without a new content drop. Okay, we did kind of get events, but we were just doing the same thing over and over again. But in 2021, we got faction wars. Basically, it's when a faction like you know kills a specific enemy the most to get like a big reward. It's not that great. It's just too little, too late. Listen, SAS4 isn't a bad game, but it's a pretty big disappointment coming off the heels that it was the amazing SAS3. Honestly, I always just wish they'd go back and update SAS3.